part four of this uh, video where we're going to be looking at adding some further mechanical detailing to the back of the sculpture's head uh, and also soldering together some copper pipes to create a stand to hang the sculpture from. So back with my selection of junk here and I've got a variety of bits and pieces as you can see. Um, some of these elements are used in the original model. Um, this is a deodorant bottle there and um, I've actually found these things quite useful. You may remember that I used the handle of one of these in the original model to act as a sort of a fuel cell. Um, I also found that the, uh, the rollable parts of these are quite useful. I made some eyes um, out of those for a previous model. Um, what I'm going to do here is use uh, some of these elements to make some uh, rocket boosters to go in the back of the head. Now I've no idea what these things are, um, I tend to say just interesting looking uh, bits and pieces from uh, all manner of places. They, they might have come from some flat pack furniture or something like that, uh, but I thought they had quite a nice looking uh, um, sort of a uh, mechanical look to them, so um, I hung on to them when I saw them, and I think they're going to come in useful here. So um, as you can see I'm just taking some of these elements here and uh, pressing them together. Um, I find that uh, deodorant lids, things like that, are usually quite good for rocket boosters. Uh, my go-to piece uh, for, for rocket boosters in the past was always Muller Light yogurts. The, uh, the shape of the pot was always just looked like a rocket booster to me. But um, as you can see here, I've got um, a fairly, fairly decent uh, shape there, I think. I was actually thinking about using one of these for the uh, for the exhaust port of the rocket booster. I only had one of them, unfortunately, so I might have to have a wander about Tesco to see if I can uh, find a matching pair that I can use. So I went to Tesco. I didn't actually find any anything uh, useful for rocket boosters, but I did find this kind of interesting-looking um, deodorant bottle here. It's got quite a lot of mechanical detailing inside, which actually looks like it'd be quite useful. Now, now it probably sounds like I'm a little bit obsessed with uh, deodorant bottle caps and things like that. Um, I promise I'm not. It's just one of those necessary evils you sort of find yourself uh, looking into when you're uh, when you're making models like this. Right, so that's how the uh, rocket booster is going to sit in the back of the head. So I'm just going to sort of uh, making sure that that will look alright. Um, I think it might be a bit big, but I uh, don't mind the way that looks actually. Kind of maybe looks the, uh, makes the head look a little bit like a kind of a, I don't know, a rocket or a torpedo or something. Right, so here's my two rocket boosters. I've glued all the pieces together now. Um, so now I want to think about actually adding some mechanical detail to the outsides of these. So this is just sheet styrene plastic and I really love this stuff, it's really easy to use, you can glue it easily um, and as you can see I'm just scoring it and once you've scored the line you can just bend it and it will break. So very easy to cut to size, very easy to uh, sand down as well if you need to. So what I'm doing is just cutting some um, small squares here and these are going to be like a panel detailing uh, on the outside of the, uh, of the motor. I'm just sanding the edges there, you don't want too sharp an edge or it doesn't look so natural so I'm just uh, giving it a bit of a rounded edge. Um, and that's how it's going to sit on the rocket booster there. Um, the uh, plastic needs, um, it's you know, obviously naturally a flat sheet so it just needs to be bent uh, slightly so it'll adhere to the, um, to the curved surface of the, uh, of the rocket there. And I'm just using super glue to uh, glue this on. I'm also going to add some of these uh, detail pieces uh, which come from VHS tapes, it's part of the internal mechanism, I mentioned it in the previous video. Um, I just find these things are really uh, cool looking and as you can see uh, I've got four glued on there, I think they add quite a nice little uh, bit of uh, mechanical detailing there, I'm not sure what they might be but some sort of a mechanical mechanism. So I'm also coming out some thin strips of styrene here and this is, this is just going to be some uh, further mechanical detailing uh, which I'm attaching to the uh, VHS pieces that I've uh, glued on there. Just takes a little blob of super glue there. Um, I've been using, as you may have seen in previous videos, the super glue activator as well, which is just a spray uh, which you spray on, and that causes the super glue to kick straight away. So that's quite useful and it saves you holding it in place for uh, for how long it takes to set. Right, so there's my mechanical detailing added to that section. Uh, I'm just going to do um, three more of those for the other uh, pieces, um, and that'll be done. So I think that's all of the mechanical detail I need for these. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on them. Um, quite like the way that looks. There's sort of enough texture on the uh, on the uh, rocket booster, I think, to um, to hold the eye. Yeah, these things are quite useful. I think um, it's just a block with a bunch of crocodile clips sticking out the top of it. Uh, they're intended for putting photos in, but um, I find them really useful just for holding things that like gluing or for holding things that you need to paint. Um, so yeah, um, if you can get hold of those, um, you, I think you'll find them really useful. Right, so there's my two finished rocket boosters, um, quite like the look of them. Um, so, uh, next step is to give them a bit of paint. 
Now one problem I've run into a few times is that um, this type of plastic um, that's often used for um, deodorant bottles and shampoo bottles and things like that uh, doesn't take paint very well, the paint doesn't adhere to the surface. So what I've done here is to give this a, a layer of enamel varnish. Uh, I'm hoping that the enamel varnish is going to stick to the uh, plastic of the uh, deodorant bottle uh, and in turn that will allow the uh, paint that I'm applying here to adhere to the varnish. Um, so I'm just going to give that a coat of paint, um, let it dry and then I'm just going to try and see if I can scratch it off. What normally happens is that the paint just peels off in very very easily. Uh, so I'm interested to see how this will uh, how this will uh, react now that I've got a layer of varnish on there. Right, so as you can see I'm just giving that a scratch with my finger. Um, previously when I've painted this type of plastic just with paint straight onto the plastic, uh, the paint's peeled off very easily. Um, but as you can see, although it's leaving some scratch marks, it's not actually peeling off. So that seems to be adhering quite well, so I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to carry on painting, that seems to be doing quite well. So as before, I'm just adding some uh, rust uh, detail here using um, weathering powders. Um, I'm just trying to make the uh, engine look beat down, rusted, um, just so it fits in with the aesthetic for the uh, face. Right, so there are my finished engines, all nicely uh, rusted up. Um, yeah, quite like the look of that. Um, what I've found uh, that's quite useful here is to just get some um, some weathering powder without any uh, varnish base in it, just to dab that on. So as you can see, it gives it quite a nice texture, uh, which you often get in rusted uh, metals. Uh, I think it looks quite realistic. So to do some other um, mechanical detailing work here, I've got these um, laser cut cog wheels. These are produced by a company called Cog02 and um, as you can see they're just really nice uh, mechanical detailing pieces. So what I think I'm going to do is add these to the existing cog wheels that are on the uh, back of the sculpture. I'm just trying to build that out a bit to make it look like a mechanism. Uh, perhaps it could be something that perhaps um, helps the uh, rocket boosters to manoeuvre. But uh, as long as it looks like it might do something I find that that kind of uh, does the trick. So what I'm doing here is to score out uh, some circles into some styrene plastic with some calipers. Uh, what these are going to be is um, just some um, spacers to hold a uh, pipe in the middle of the um, rocket booster. So I'm just drilling a 22mm uh, uh, hole here uh, with the uh, pillar drill. And if you've scored the plastic uh, deeply enough, you can literally just prise out the uh, the piece that you've cut. Um, requires a little bit of sanding, uh, but as you can see, that's going to fit inside the uh, rocket booster like that. So that should allow me to centre a pipe. So I've got this um, 22mm uh, PVC pipe here, so I'm just I'm sliding that in. And there you go, that's just going to help um, position uh, my rocket booster and also add a little bit more mechanical detail. So there's my two rocket boosters uh, with their pipes added. And uh, as you can see, I've added a little bit more conduit there and given it a uh, coat of paint. Uh, and that's gonna sit inside the head like that. So as you can see, there's just a hint of a sort of another structure that's holding the uh, rocket booster in place. And uh, that's gonna be secured with some hot glue. And as with the first model, I'm gonna use the uh, handle from the deodorant bottle there. And that's gonna look a bit like a, sort of a fuel cell type thing, I think. And there's the fuel cells with some uh, paint added. So probably needs a little bit more rust there, uh, but I'll take care of that in a sec. So the intention for this sculpture was that it would always be hanging from some chain, so it was suspended from some sort of industrial piece of machinery. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just making some uh, loops of wire and embedding them in the uh, sculpture. Um, if I'd thought about this beforehand, I probably would have actually attached them to the armature and embedded them in the clay, but um, you know, I just didn't think of it at the time. So I'm just uh, measuring out the uh, distance here with some calipers and drilling a hole in, and just gluing the, uh, the loops in place. I'm also just bending the ends of the wires on the inside of the sculpture there just to add a bit more of a mechanical support there so it doesn't come out. Uh, finally a bit of super glue. Right, and there's my sculpture hanging from some chains. Uh, so the next step is actually to make a frame that will uh, hold this in place. So I'm going to start building the stand now and I'm going to start using this 15mm copper pipe. Um, this stuff's dead cheap, it's the same stuff you'd use for plumbing at home. Um, and as you can see I've cut a, uh, a chunk out of the pipe there and this is just to allow me to bend it to shape. So you can see I'm just uh, bending that down and I've got like a, uh, an angle to join in it now. So that's going to form part of the main support. So there's my uh, shaped piece of pipe there. I've also got a variety of plumbing fittings as well to uh, put this together. 
So what I'm going to do is take some more 15mm pipe and uh, use this uh, pipe cutter here. Uh, just a cheap thing I got from Wix, it's only a couple of quid. Uh, but what you do is you attach it to your pipe, uh, slowly tighten it up and just turn it around the pipe. Uh, and that will um, cut through the pipe pretty quickly. Right, so there's my finished stand, uh, and it's all just sort of um, pushed together at the moment, it's not actually secured. Uh, the way I'm going to secure this is uh, solder the pipes together, um, and that will uh, make it nice and rigid, and it will be able to support the model which will be hanging from the chains. Right, so uh, soldering, um, you can do this using brass or copper, uh, I tend to use a combination of the two. Um, these are the items I use to actually do that. So this is essentially, as far as I know, the same stuff a plumber or someone else might use to solder, uh, to solder together. Uh, pipes for plumbing. Um, so we've got a small blowtorch here and a butane refill. We've got these from Maplin, about 20 quid I think. Um, this is really all you need. You can use larger blowtorches and I have got one but I've found that I can do most of the things I want to do with this. Um, it's quite a small flame as you can see. Let's turn it up. There you go. But that's, uh, that's enough really to do uh, small scale stuff like this. And the way it basically works is you take your flux which is a type of paste. There we go. What you do is you put that basically where you want the solder, which is here, to go. Um, and that just creates a channel for the uh, solder to actually stick to the metal. Um, so what I'm going to do is start soldering these pieces together to make a stand for the, uh, for the sculpture. It's also worth mentioning that I've got a heat mat here just to protect my table. Um, I suppose, in theory, I should probably be doing this outside, maybe in a garage or something, but um, my front room is all I've got. So uh, I've been doing quite a lot of this and I haven't set fire to it yet. So uh, let's see what we can do. So I'm just going to clamp the piece of metal in place out of this clamp here. So what I'm going to do is take some uh, flux and I'm just going to put that on the joints and there. You only need a little bit of this really, um, so I'm not going too crazy with it. And it's sometimes a good idea to actually rub down the uh, the pipe with a bit of wire wool if there's sort of a bunch of gunk on it or something. I find you can get away without doing that, but um, it can make things easier. Uh, and then we're just going to start heating the uh, heating the pipe. Now, depending on the size of the piece, this can take a while. Uh, just try and heat it evenly. It is possible to sort of not exactly burn the metal, but sort of overheat it. Um, so just sort of. Uh, Keep moving the uh, blowtorch around, even heating it. What you can do is occasionally touch some solder to the joint to see if it will melt. And what you want to do is just get the uh, the piece you're heating up to a temperature where the uh, the solder will melt. And when it's at the correct temperature, what you'll see is that it actually sort of sucks the solder into the joint. Um, it does it quite quickly. So if I touch it here, I don't think it's going to be hot enough just yet. And as you can see, it's not melting if I hold it to it. So we keep heating. Well, it's starting to get there. It's heating up enough to melt the solder, and then you can see, you can see the solder is actually attached to the pipe there. So we're sort of in the right temperature region now. So I'm just going to start adding some solder to the uh, joint. It probably needs to be heated slightly more, and then what we should see is the uh, solder flowing into the joint, which I think it's starting to do now. Might be slightly too big a gap there. So there's my joint uh, covered there, uh, looks fully sealed, um, so obviously it's a bit of a mess at the minute, um, but I'm going to let that cool down and then just give it a bit of a filing down, and once there's a bit of paint on it, it should hopefully look like it's been welded. Right, so now I'm going to turn my attention to this piece of the uh, structure, and uh, what I'm going to do is just add some flux to the joints uh, around the edges of the piece. So 
So now I'm soldering all the joints together. And as you can see, the metal's got uh, hot enough now for the solder to stick to it. So there you can go. So you can see that the uh, solder has been sucked into the joint there, and that's sort of the reaction you're looking for whenever you're doing this. Uh, when the metal gets to the correct point, um, I suppose it's a complete reaction or something like that, will suck it into the joint, and that's uh, what you want to go for. Right, so here's my finished structure. Um, pretty quick to do, this took less than half an hour. Um, and as you can hear, it's pretty rigid as well. So much give in it. Um, it's held in the clamp at the moment, but I'll put a base on it at some stage. So that seems fairly strong to me. And, and I'm hoping that it will be strong enough to suspend my model by its chains in a little. What I've also done is to solder some loops of copper wire onto the pipes as well. And this is just to give me a point to hook the chains on um, that the model will be suspended from. And there's my finished model. Um, it seems to be quite secure, it's not falling down just yet. Um, now this part of the video has actually got much longer than I had originally anticipated. Um, this was going to be the last part of the video. Now I think what I'm going to do is uh, leave this one here uh, and come back in the next um, section for part 5 uh, and just look at finally detailing the uh, stand, uh, adding the base and putting the final touches to the sculpture. Well thanks very much for watching, uh, I'll be posting more videos on this project and others so please do subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with what's going on. Uh, you can also find out more on my website which is uh, www.thedarkpower.com uh, or you can find me on Facebook, uh, just search for The Dark Power.